Hi everyone and uh, welcome to 2024. I hope you're having a fantastic year so far. Happy New Year to you all and many, many blessings to you all. So I'm coming to you with your January 2024 Oracle card guidance. And um, yeah, we have five decks today. And the first one is your Heal Yourself reading cards. Uh, the second is your Oracle of Visions Oracle um oracle cards the third is your aboriginal dreaming cards the fourth is your tea leaf fortune cards and the fifth are your enchanted oracle cards so go ahead and make your selection i just want to say that um I put out a call for readings that you guys would like to have at the beginning of uh, December and I didn't hear any requests from any of you so I didn't put out anything but I will go ahead and put out a couple of readings uh, for the year of uh, 2024 uh, later on this week. I had some technical problems at the beginning of this week and I couldn't get anything out uh, but um, yeah do let me know if you have any requests uh, particularly I am able to devote a little bit more time to the channel this year uh, much more than I was last year as you know I just uploaded some monthly oracle card readings last year and uh, but this year I've been able to carve out a bit of time uh, to upload more regularly so do let me know what you'd like from this channel all right anyway I'm wishing you all a fabulous 2024 I hope it's going to be a good year for you all and I do pray for that as well and let's just all give a prayer for peace and healing in this world as I think uh, we desperately need that all right let's get into the reading you may go ahead and um, make your choice once again it's your um, heal yourself reading cards your oracle of visions cards your aboriginal dreaming cards your tea leaf fortune cards and your enchanted oracle cards go ahead and make your selection and you can go directly to the reading and so welcome to Kismet Rising. For those of you who've chosen the first option, uh, it's your, we're using the Heal Yourself reading cards by Inner Siegel. And I don't think I've used these cards on this channel before. Um, if I, I might have though, a few months ago or perhaps a year ago. Um, in one of the Oracle card readings. So this reading is about January uh, 2024. We're asking, what do we need to know for January 2024? What is our guidance uh, for this month? And uh, yes, and apologies that it's a bit late. I had some technical difficulties at the beginning of this year. Well, I think these are very nice cards for January. I think that um, January, it really speaks to the energy uh, of this time as well, which is very much about closing certain cycles or coming to the end of certain cycles and beginning new ones. And I think that it's, it's a very important time uh, to leave behind certain things that might be distracting you from your own soul purpose as well as uh, keeping you in a space of disempowerment. And I feel like here, the first in the first three weeks of January, it's about recognizing that there are cycles that can be brought to an end and there are cycles that can be um, renewed or there are cycles that are needing to be begun in your life. And as you were ending... Uh, 2023 as you're coming to the last few months of 2023 I think that you might have been 
quite aware of what it is that you'd like to leave behind and what it is that you'd like to take uh, forward with you in 2024. And I feel that uh, in the first week of January in 2024, you're going to feel like it's really uh, acute for you that these changes need to be made, that certain cycles need to be ended. You know, perhaps you may be ending a partnership that you're in. Perhaps you have a roommate that it's time to move on from. Perhaps it's a home that you it's time to move on from or a country that you need to move on from or a job that you need to move on from. But regardless, it's going to be uh, an important time for you to leave behind something in order for you to be able to carve a new path for you, a new cycle for you to be able to go ahead. Now, I see that as you come into the second week of January, what you might find is that you're a bit distracted. You might be um, experiencing some kind of temptation. You might be distracted by an idea or a kind of uh, some kind of fallacy, some dream that is not necessarily a dream that can be manifested. It might be that you are tempted by somebody or but by the idea of love. It might be that you're tempted by an idea of a particular lifestyle, but it's not within your reach at this given moment. Whatever it is, it seems to be distracting you more than it's um, actually able to help you to to progress in your life. There may also be a temptation to to go back to old habits, to fall back into habits that you'd like to move on from. It may be that you are ready to actually move on, but you lack the willpower or the strength or the courage to be able to take that next step. And so in the second week of January, it's going to be really important for you to understand that what you need to be doing is focusing on the goals that you've set for yourself, on the on the dreams that you actually have for yourself and to be able to uh, to just make sure that you can establish a particular routine or particular habit with yourself so that you're not um, falling back into old patterns. I think it's very much about establishing a new way of doing things, which is more empowering for yourself. And as you lead into the third week of, uh, of January, it looks here like you know, your mind's going to be tricking you to come back to a particular way that you were previously, the, a way that did not particularly serve you. And the card here is called, uh, it's labeled victim consciousness. It may be that you're feeling less empowered than you are. And I think that as you come to the third week, as you're doing this uphill struggle of trying to establish a new routine, of trying to actually be more empowered in your life, um, what you need to be taking care of is that you don't feel sorry for yourself, that you don't feel that you're powerless in your circumstances, that you always acknowledge and realize the power that you have as an individual in this world um, within for yourself, as well as to impact those things around you. And you may say, well, there's so many things happening in the world that I'm not really happy about and I, know I can't do anything about it. Well, I would beg to differ and say that you can pray about it. You can put a positive um, energy towards it. And that is a form of healing that you are giving to, to a particular set of circumstances. So there is always something that you can do. And even though you may be feeling overwhelmed about what is going on around you at that particular time, it's important for you to recognize that you are always in control. You're always in in power of yourself and the way you react to something, the way you feel about something, you may your initial response may be a particular feeling that you cannot control, but thereafter you are controlling how you feel about something. You're making a choice to feel a particular way. And so uh, as I, I think as you come into the third week of January, you are going to be faced with that. And it's going to be something that you might feel that you need to really... Um, work on or really struggle with in the in the third week of January. For others of you, it might be just a simple recognition of how you might have been uh, a victim in, the, in a previous role or how you might have more identified with being a victim in a previous at a previous time of your life. And now you're moving on from it. It's not to say that being a victim is bad or to, to identify as a victim is bad. At certain times of your life, if you are, are, have been a victim, it, there's a good cause to feel 
and to be part of that victim consciousness. And that's part of your healing. And it's not something to be frowned upon or to be discarded. However, there is a moment at which you have to understand that it's time to move on from that. And it's time to embrace healing and greater power and to be able to make a motion in that direction. And it's at that moment when you realize that, that you truly are stepping into your power and your divine power and you are in alignment with all that can assist you and drive you forward. Okay, and then as we come to the fourth week of January, you're going to find over the last week of January, and you can divide this into, um, um, yeah, into 10 days or into uh, seven days as you like. Um, and, and you know, the cards, the, the meanings and the, the feelings or the um, the actions of the cards will play out in a blended way through the month of January. So it's not strictly the last week. I think that as you come into the last week of, of January, though, you are going to feel like you are in alignment with your dreams, that you have been able to recognize the ending that is that has been here, that you are able to overcome the temptation of falling back into old routines, that you are able to step into your empowerment here and you are in alignment with your dreams. So you are on a track to be able to achieve that is what, what whatever it is that you've set out for to uh, achieve. And so I'm going to leave it at that. I think that it's a wonderful month for you to be able to establish yourself in the path that you've chosen for yourself. And uh, it's not anything out of the ordinary in that one needs to be able to overcome challenges which may keep you locked in a particular space and I feel that it is quite an empowering month for you because the time is ripe for you to evolve and to be able to come into that space where you are actually finally living your dreams. And I would say, though, that you need to know what your dreams are. You need to know what it is that you want in order to be able to move in that direction. So if you haven't established what that is, then go ahead right now and think about what it is that you truly desire. What is your dream life? And uh, where are your own um, beliefs about your reality holding you back from living your dream life? And how is it that you can uh, carve a path that is a, a direct line to where your dreams are rather than a kind of a maze that might lie between you and your dreams? OK, so good luck with that. And I'm wishing a fabulous January 2024. May you have a fabulous year ahead and uh, good luck with everything. All right. And um, stay tuned to the channel and do let me know what you'd like in terms of pick a card readings or whatever other content you'd like to see on this channel. Thanks very much and many blessings to you all. So for those of you who have chosen the option number two, we're using the Oracle of Visions cards and we're asking the question, what is it that we need to know for January 2024? How is it that we need to prepare for this month and what can we look forward to in this month? So it seems to me that as you start off the year um, of, of 2024, as in the first week of, of January, there are going to be a few things that you quite, you're thinking about quite deeply. You might be in quite a reflective space. And it feels to me that there's quite a lot going on in you, which may be gnawing away at you. It might be that you feel that um, there's a great deal of inspiration and a, a great deal of vision that you have but that you're not able to completely engage in it or you're not able to step into it immediately and that there are a few niggling things that are gnawing away at you. I feel that regardless, this inspiration is going to give rise to something wonderful in you and that you are going to feel a lot more, um, a lot more engaged in your vision as the, the year uh, goes along. Um, I just want to read a little uh, excerpt from the the 
book itself that comes with um, with this, just so that you have more clarity that perhaps I have not given you. Okay, so the card is titled Dreams, Meditation and Spiritual Escape. And it says, some colors exist in dreams that are not present in the waking spectrum. All right, and it reads, our dreams provide us with an alternative reality. Limitless and unfettered, we are free to soar with angels or sink to the depths of demons. To imagine, to create, to escape the norm, to wonder and ask what if, and to awaken refreshed and question why not. Um, okay, I'm not going to read any further. What I do feel here is that um, it's the dreams that you have, or the inspiration that you have there, that light. It's something that's it's beckoning you to a new way of life. It's talking to you and, and guiding you to a, a, a better vision of yourself, a better form of yourself in this reality. And I think that this these um, these are little niggling things that you have to deal with in order to be able to fully step into yourself in the first week of January. And it could be something small, like just organizing your home or, you know, cleaning out your shelves. Or it could be just doing some filing or just, you know, perhaps um, curating who you are spending time with and and how much of time you are spending on particular things, perhaps on social media or, you know, with with regard to, to your friends or family and it's really about being able to just curate those things, look after that, and so that you can fully step into your light uh, as the year requires you to. Now, I see that as you go into the second week of January here, that you are fully in, in engaged in your life. You have fully stepped into what it is that you you desire and where it is that you're going to. You've already begun the routines that you've wanted to engage in. You've already started putting to into work what it is that you truly want for yourself. You are being quite creative in the way in which you go about achieving what it is that you want to achieve. And you have um, more faith in yourself because you have been able to, um, to create uh, a certain... A pathway for yourself. So you have been successful at whatever it is that you want to do. So perhaps in this, by the second week of January, you've already started um, engaging in a new sport or perhaps learning to play a particular instrument or just, uh, you know, creating a new habit that you wanted for yourself. Or you're just really engaged in your work. You've, you know, you're fully on your work and you're feeling all the inspiration, all the creativity that one ought to feel at the beginning of a year and so if you are you know if it's not yet your full your new year and you are just only celebrating uh your Christmas in January as you come into the second week I would suggest here that your uh you are still full of exuberance ex exuberance sorry and jubilation uh of the of the festive season it really feels like that it feels like there's a lot of energy here that you have in the second week of uh january and as you go into the third week of january you're going to find that your manifestation powers are at a peak you're going to find that you're able to think of something uh, or dream of something as you were able to hear and just have it manifest quite easily there. There is quite a lot of power behind you at this point. You don't have any obstacles in your path. You are able to create what it is that you desire. It's almost like you have an alchemical um, uh, reaction to the, the things that you have ar ar around you, you know, like a meter's touch. And I think that as you go into the third week of January, you are going to be able to find that you are a lot more productive than you've been uh, perhaps in the last two years or three years. <laughs> and I don't know where that comes from, by the way. I'm not seeing it really here. It's just a message that came through for some of you uh, or maybe for one person. And I feel that you, you're just going to have a new energy. Um, and I think that certain disappointments that you've had in the past where you feel that perhaps, you know, you've been along a particular path, but you're not being able to achieve something. I feel that that's going to be washed away because you're going to be able to see 
the fruits of your beliefs. So it might have been that you haven't had this manifestation technique for a while. It's been a bit out of your reach. You've had it, but it hasn't been able to be applied in a particular area of your life, perhaps in your love life or your work life or your family life or your home life, whatever it is. But now you're seeing as you come into the third week of January that you're able to create things in your life in with a lot more ease than you've been able to do in the last two to three years. And I think that as you go into the fourth week of January, you're going to be quite deep into your world already. You've, you're starting the world, the year off in, in quite a, at quite a fast pace, I think. And you're going to feel like you've made a great headway by the time you come to the end of January. And you've, you're able to overcome certain challenges that you might have had along the way. And I feel that you do that already by the second week or even by the first week. You know, it's little niggling things here that, that you are able to overcome you know perhaps it's um, just creating certain boundaries uh with the people that you in that you share your space with or perhaps it has to do with uh creating boundaries with people you sh- share your social space space with and so i think that you are going to be able to just uh create that dome for yourself within which you're able to create and you're able to uh pursue your dreams and to be able to you're going to see by the time you come to the end of january that you've made great headway and that the impact that you have is going to be shining out in the world already so i think that there are going to be people who appreciate the impact that you've made you are going to feel like you've come a long way um, by the time that you've come to the end of January, that you've made great progress in your life. And I, I think it's going to be a very good month for you. Um, it's going to be, you're not going to have much difficulty getting this month started with. You're going to get right into it and it's going to be quite a, um, a, a productive space for you. And I think it's not going to be, it's, it's, you know, it's going to be productive, but it's going to be very creative. And I think there's going to be quite a lot of spiritual energy that you're able to harness to be able to uh, bring into other spheres of your life. And it's going to have quite a good effect uh, on you ultimately. All right. So I think, yeah, it's it's going to be a really great month for you. I'm very excited for you. Uh, I hope that it is it works out like that. Do write to me and let me know how your month turns out. And I wish you a fabulous January 2024 and a very happy new year to you all. So for those of you who've chosen the Aboriginal Dreaming Totems, uh, this, I wasn't going to use this deck today uh, at, at all, but um, I, it kept falling out and into my space. And I thought that there must be somebody out there who wants to choose this deck. So do let me know which of you have chosen this deck. I'm really curious uh, to hear from you. And uh, we're asking, what do we need to know for the month of January? What is it that we need to know for the month of January? Okay, so we have the cards Persuasion, Preservation, Wonderful, and Sadness. And I did pick a card as a clarifier for this last one. So I think as you begin the year, uh, there's going to be quite a need to be able to persuade yourself almost of the direction that you need to take. It might be that you feel uncertain about something. 
It might be that you are undecided about something. There's an action that needs to be taken. There's a decision that needs to be made that you're unclear about. And it's the as the year starts, it's it's saying to you that you need to actually think about this. Uh, the card reads, the card itself reads, um, it's all about how you see the situation. If you are looking for negatives, you will find them because there are many. But try concentrating on the positives. There are plenty of them too. Okay. So I think that if you are trying to make a decision and it's not particularly going in your direction or you feel overwhelmed by it or you're not able to make the change that you're required to make in your life or you want to make in your life, that I think you need to look at, at what beliefs you have that are holding you back from actually making those changes and see if they are truly really true you know sometimes you may hold beliefs that are not actually true so you have to, have to look at it and think well is that is that actually a fact what am I thinking or is it just a fear that I have that may come to pass and you know what are the what is actually the truth of the situation for instance let's say you want to move or you want to to leave your partner or you want to move I would say look at the situation as if it's going to be you know, you might be thinking, oh, I won't have enough money to do so, or I won't be able to manage financially if I do, or if I, I might, if I do, I might have to uh, change my lifestyle. Well, you don't actually know that, do you? You don't actually know that that will literally be the case. It may be that you decide to move and you uh, have find a really wonderful place that you live in and it increases the quality of your life. Or it may be that you leave, decide to leave your partner and you have, um, you know, it just opens up a whole new set of possibilities for you where you're able to create more wealth in your life. So those are just two examples. And perhaps I've given a, a pretty lame uh, um, explanation of it. But uh, I'm just trying to give you an idea of, you know, how it is that you could be telling yourself something which is not necessarily true, because there are so many other opportunities and possibilities that exist out there. So uh, what are you telling yourself that is not actually true? And I think that the pers- in the first week of January, as you're faced with persuasion, you are going to be needing to tell you know, just take note of how it is that you speak to yourself. What is it that you say to yourself? What is it that you are telling yourself that perhaps is not necessarily necessarily true? So as we enter the second week of January, we have the card preservation. And here it reads, reevaluate this battle you engaged in. A hasty retreat may be in order. Self-preservation may be the only thing salvageable. Okay, so yeah, it gives me the sense that in the month of January, the second week of January, you might be feeling that you need to fight for something. You you might be feeling like you need to um, fight for your space, perhaps, or your energy. You know, perhaps you are surrounded by energy vampires. Uh, and, you know, there are some people that interact with you in a manner that, take something from you and there's other people who uh, interact with you that give something to you or simply that there's a, a balance a give and take and are you surrounded by just people who are taking something from you instead of somebody people who are able to give something back to you and so where is it that you need to put yourself first and where is it that you're able to uh, connect with yourself in a way that you understand what your needs are and you're able to give yourself what it is that you need Uh, are you perhaps forsaking yourself are you perhaps not listening to what your true needs are and what is it that you truly need to be to be giving yourself okay so I think those are the kind of questions that you're going to be asking yourself or that you're going to be faced with in the second week of January is the question is am I giving myself what I need at this given moment all right as we move into the uh, third week of January we have the card wonderful and it reads here sometimes being too cautious is just an excuse for being afraid to take risks and move forward don't use this as your excuse to miss out on something amazing. All right. So I have to giggle because I think that is my um, my problem. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, sometimes uh, I think, it, especially if you're an earth sign, you might find that you can be or a fixed sign. You know, you might 
find that you you're kind of quite fixed you're kind of quite stuck in a particular way and you're not able to actually um make the move to create something wonderful in your life and you 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 know use caution as a, an excuse for it and i think that um that uh you know to be cautious is necessary and it's it's important at a certain given moment but at some moment when there's stagnancy in your life it, it's important to throw caution to the wind and just see where it is that you can invite new energy into your life it's like cleaning up and spring cleaning in order to be able to flush out old energies and bring in new energies it's you know it's a matter of just being able to revitalize yourself and give yourself a new um yeah makeover in a way like an energetic makeover you know so where is it that you haven't been able to do that or you haven't you've just been holding back and i think that the third week of january is a great time to be able to do that perhaps there's something that you've wanted to do for a very long time that you haven't given yourself the chance to do so perhaps there's a new routine that you want to bring into your life and um the third week of january is actually saying to you go ahead and do that just you know don't think about it so much just go ahead and and do it try to do something differently from what you would have you you would normally be doing and give yourself the opportunity to be able to experience something new to be able to f- give yourself a new fresh energy um and to just flush out that energy that is no longer serving you okay uh because perhaps it's time to move on from something and just to be able to move on from something is um it's sometimes a great great gift in itself so i think that the first three weeks of january are very much for you about moving on from something it's about being able to tell yourself what it is what are the changes that you need to make and be able to cut away from certain things to be able to acknowledge that there's more out there for you and it's not a, you don't have to be afraid to be able to take a chance as far as that's concerned and then as you come to the week number 4 we have the card sadness and it reads allow yourself the space to feel miserable <laughs> mourn what has been lost or what cannot be if you don't take the time now your sadness will catch up with you later when you're least expecting it okay so um yes i think that you know if you are confronted with sadness if you are confronted with some loss in your life or you are confronted with change as it is here you know sometimes with change comes um a great deal of feeling of loss and grief and uh depression and well denial so if you are experiencing loss you you are needing to move on you are needing to make these changes in january take a moment to feel what it actually means to you you know you don't have to actually just be okay all the time or to put up a front that you're okay i would say go ahead and take off that mask and just feel the sadness and be one with that sadness because a lot of time dealing with that grief or sadness or loss in that given moment is far more healing and healthy than than actually you know being stoic and and uh shelving it for a later time so whatever sadness you come up with at the end of uh, january be, it's okay to feel it it's okay to be one with it and sometimes it's not really a sadness it's more like a a sense of nostalgia or a reminiscence uh or something something that you're just remembering something that isn't there anymore and it's it's you know sometimes when there's it's time to say goodbye in some way um there is that sadness that comes up so i just i did call, uh, pull out a card here that is uh a clarification for the sadness and the card reads decisions and it it the caption here is oops you can't read that can you the caption reads it's your decision whether you keep this up or let go but continuing will not change the circumstance or the outcome okay so i really feel that here as you uh go into as you enter 2024 and as you come to uh the Jan- January 2024 you're going to be dealing the whole month with having to let go of something you're going to be dealing with having to change your lifestyle in some particular way or change make some decisions in your life uh and i feel that it january the first week of january it's very much about you know trying to tell yourself what needs to be done or understanding what needs to be done it's also you know perhaps you're denying 
what it is that needs to be changed. Perhaps you're not willing to truly accept what it is that you need to change. And perhaps one of the things that you need to change is is just kind of letting go of somebody in your life or letting go of a particular set of circumstances because it doesn't actually serve you. And so I think that if you are actually uh, in that situation in the month of January, allow yourself to simply be uh, one with yourself and understand what it is that you truly need and and what serves you and what doesn't serve you. You know, if you feel good after being with somebody then you know that that person is good for you. If you don't feel good, or if you feel depleted, or if you feel that your energy is being drained, then you understand completely what needs to change. You know, maybe you walk into your home and you just don't feel it serves you anymore. It's not a safe space for you anymore. It's not a sanctuary for you anymore. Or maybe there's a particular group of friends that you hang out with that just don't resonate with you in the same way that you used to or a particular job that you just can't stand anymore and it's time to move on from so i think that um for those of you who've chosen the aboriginal dreaming totem uh cards here it's very much a time for you to understand what it is that you truly don't need in your life and make the decision as to moving on from it and yes there will be sadness and yes it will be wonderful as well and it will be a, a way to preserve you if you can persuade yourself to go about doing it. So good luck with that. I wish you a lot of strength and courage in the month of January 2024. I hope that it will be a good one for you. Good luck with the changes that need to be made. Okay, so for those of you who've chosen the fourth option here, I've chosen to work with the tea leaf fortune cards, which I have not used on this channel before. And just so you know, the cards consist of the tea leaf cards. They have the months of the year cards and then they have the astral house cards. And I, I'm not going to, for the purposes of this reading, um, for because we're using it as an oracle card guidance, I'm not going to be using the months of the year cards or the astral house cards. And uh, perhaps at some point I will use the whole deck in, in a proper card reading, a tea leaf card reading um, at a later point. But just for today's reading. I'm going to be excluding these two sets of cards, okay, because the astral house has particular um, areas like uh, love, marriage, happiness, success, wealth, career, and I want to be able to cover all of them without only one. And then the, the months of the year are just the months of the year, and we're working only with January. So I just want to, uh, we know we're working with January, and I'm just going to put this aside and I am going to, um, because I'm not a tea leaf reader, uh, and I just use, I am a clairvoyant, and I do read tarot, I do read a Lemonormand, I can read playing cards, I can read runes, uh, and I, a bit of I Ching, um, but I, I don't, I can read coffee grounds, and, uh, and I have read tea leaves, but I will say that my strength lies in clairvoyant uh, readings, so I don't gather my information from the actual formation of the tea leaves or the formation of the coffee grounds i gather my i get my information clairvoyantly and so uh i i yes i just uh, and the same goes for when i read cards for you i i tend to read uh the card but i'm giving you a clairvoyant interpretation i'm going to do the same today and but i am going to also include the meaning as provided by the book here for the tea leaf so i'll i'll give you the meaning for that and i'll i'll give you my own interpretation on it so i hope you do enjoy this reading and let's get into it i think it's going to be a little bit of a challenge for me to actually um shuffle these cards but let's give it a go
Okay, so for those of you who've chosen the fourth option here, as you can tell, these are tea leaf cards. They're a little bit different from your usual oracle cards. I want to go ahead anyway and pick them. Now I've picked these cards for the first for the four weeks of January. And I've chosen this one as a clarification for older women. I chose then another one as a clarification for the whole uh, deck. And, uh, oh, well, not the whole deck, sorry, for the whole month. And I've chosen broken uh, these two here as a clarification for that and, and, and that. Okay, so let's get into it. Well, I feel, well, I'm going to read the cards as it as it as it comes out here uh, and I'm going to use the book to identify the meaning of it um, but I also would like to 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 tell you my what I think is my clairvoyant interpretation of it okay so for the card for the first week of January uh, the card is older woman and it reads dealings or relationship with an older woman an older woman is shown this card indicates that you will have important feelings or a relationship with an older woman during the time frame indicated. However, the symbol does not indicate whether the older woman is a friend or foe, or whether the relationship will be of a romantic, financial, or social nature. Check connecting cards to see if they reveal the nature of the older woman. All right, so uh, the card here has the, uh, it says dealings or relationship with an older woman. And I feel that uh, what it means for, and I've gotten, um, bow as a clarification so you are highly thought of so uh, when I picked this card and I saw and I got this as a clarification I immediately felt that the older woman was perhaps somebody who's in your living space or somebody who's related to you but I also felt that it could be somebody who's passed on perhaps a grandparent or great-grandparent who's passed on or a mother or an aunt who's passed on somebody who cared about you and who's guiding you and I feel that as you enter the um, year of January well the year of 2024 and January the first week of January 2024 you are going to be feeling quite resonant with somebody's feelings for you so whatever they think of you and whatever they feel for you is something that's going to seep into your own consciousness and you're going to be more aware of that and I think for each of you it's going to be quite personal and quite different and I would advise you to hear what is what there is that is being said to, to you um, I think also that for those of you where that is not resonant or does not apply I think that it's necessary to think about um, the the level of gratefulness uh, with which you enter the year, the way in which you work through your year and how it is that you want to apply that in your life. Um, I feel also that uh, it's about thinking about what is the best version of yourself as in, you know, somebody here thinks highly of you, but how, what would you be if you thought highly of yourself? And even if you are, uh, you don't identify as an, um, as a woman here um, and you're not older what would be how would you see yourself um, in a you know if you were to look at yourself at a later stage in your life or if you were to to look at yourself simply just generally speaking how would you see yourself and what would you think highly of of yourself so I think it's really a time of contemplation a time of meditation a time where you are really working with uh, a sense of yourself but perhaps through the eyes of another perhaps through uh, an angel or some uh, divine guardian angel or some type of uh, person in your life who's older who wants the best for you and uh, it's I almost feel like you need to see yourself through their eyes as you move into the week number two uh, the card is cheerful and it reads something new is entering your life okay i'm going to go ahead and read from the book here to see what it says okay it reads someone new is entering your life a person sits on a chair in front of the querist it is impossible to tell whether it's a man or a woman because of the angle the back of the chair is decorated with irises, meaning that this person has an important message for the querist. 
The simple signifies that someone new will enter or has just entered your life, but does not indicate whether it will be a man or woman or whether it will be for the better or for the worse. Check connecting cards to see if they reveal this information. I think all the cards have that. So, um, well, I would certainly look out for uh, somebody who's entering your life in the second week of uh, January. I think this could actually indicate that somebody is coming to your life with an important message, somebody who ha has the possibility of shifting your life. It might just be that somebody has been, it's been indicated to you that you should be meeting somebody or that you should go onto a dating platform or you should go onto a networking platform where you would meet other people. And perhaps you have been, it's been indicated to you or suggested to you by another. And this is something that you embark upon in the second week of January. I think um, just being open to new people entering your life or even very uh, people who've been in your life many years ago who are re-entering your life is um, is going to be bringing you quite a lot of prosperity and well-being and abundance as you go into your second week of January. The the third week of January talks about, uh, it has the card seahorse and talks about family matters. So I think that there is a, a time where you would be thinking about family matters. Now, for some of you, this older woman could be a member of your family. Um, it could be somebody who needs assistance. The seahorse here is, is perhaps showing you that you need to be have a softer look at your family or the woman in your family that perhaps you need to be more gracious or more welcoming to somebody in your family but I do want to go ahead here and read the message for you uh, for uh, Seahorse It says seahorse family matters a seahorse floats in calm warm waters even though the seahorse is male it carries eggs from the female in its abdominal pouch where they will remain until they hatch this card signifies that you will feel weighted down by family matters during the time frame shown uh check connecting cards to see if they reveal the nature of family matters okay so i feel that uh that yes, it may be that your family matters do take up much of your attention at this time, uh, in this period, on the third from the third week of January onward. I feel that perhaps it is you know your focus, your attention is definitely drawn towards your family, and whether you it can be it can be a, ma a matter that weighs you down. It can just simply be a matter that it's a family uh, get together, a family uh, a matter that needs to be attended to. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's weighing you down. I don't feel here that you're going to be so weighed down necessarily by by the family matters. It really depends on how you you interact with um, with the, the family members that you are being drawn to engage with in this month. And I don't. I feel like the seahorse though it brings joy, you know. So it might be that you choose to look at a situation differently from the way you looked at it before and it brings forgiveness and joy it could be that you choose to view family members in a different light um, it could be that you are able to accept the 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 um the honor that's being bestowed upon you by family member or by some member of your family it could be that perhaps you're being missed by your mum or you're being missed by a certain a granny or or somebody in your life who's quite significant to you or feels that you are quite significant to them in this time. And I think that your attention is drawn in that direction. And then the last card we have for a, a January is Goldfish. And the card here reads, increase in material wealth or spiritual growth. Okay, so you have here um, a time where you could have quite a lot of abundance in your life in January of um, of 2024 and that as you come to the end of the month that you can actually experience quite a lot more uh, wealth in your in your world perhaps um, quite in a financial sense as well as in another way perhaps you've received something that you wanted for a very very long time uh, perhaps you've uh, received a gift, uh, a musical instrument that you've wanted for a very, very long time, or you've just been able to act actually access money that you've needed 
um, at the, this time. And I'm just going to go ahead and read what's in here for you. It says, increase in material wealth or, or spiritual growth. An exquisite goldfish swims in clear blue water tinted by the gold by the sun. Its long fins and tail undulate slowly as it swims around the pond. This card signifies that the Aquarius will either have an increase in material wealth or will experience spiritual growth during the time frame indicated. Okay, so it could be one of the two. And I feel that, you know, with this old woman, with the seahorse and with the goldfish, it could definitely mean that it's something to do with family matters. You know, perhaps there's a birth in your family and you experience this as huge wealth. Um, perhaps you are thought of by somebody who's deceased in your family and your thoughts are lingering around that and they are trying to alert you to somebody who's coming into your life. Perhaps uh, you you receive an inheritance for some from somebody who's passed in your life. and uh, But regardless, the month of January seems to be something where you are making progress in terms of your spiritual well-being as well as your 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 network you're meeting somebody new you are de devoting time to family and you're receiving something of great value to you whether it be f spiritual or financial and you are receiving the acknowledgement that you um perhaps need or perhaps you don't need but you are being acknowledged here i asked for a clarification of these cards and i got younger man broken bridge and eagle okay and the cards here read uh dealings or or relationship with a younger man, broken bridge, it's unsuccessful outcome to a problem, and eagle, uh, which is supposed to clarify the last card here, triumph over troubles and obstacles. Now, I don't like to leave you on a note where you have something like broken bridge or unsuccessful outcome to a problem, and that is why I called, uh, asked for a clarifier. Let me see if we can position this better. So I think that there might be something here where you you have relations with people in the month of January, which pulls you in a particular direction. You know, perhaps you feel well, perhaps you feel honoured by them, perhaps you feel that there has been um, a situation which has been unsuccessful. Perhaps you've tried to create some kind of uh, business contract with somebody and it hasn't really worked out. Or perhaps you try to resolve a problem with a family member here and it hasn't really worked out. Or perhaps um, you've you've kind of tried to do something here with this new person and it, it's, it's led to you having to deal with family matters more and ultimately you gain from it. Ultimately, the troubles that you um, and the obstacles that you might encounter in January, it's not to say that you all will necessarily, but whatever you will encounter in January, you will be able to overcome it and there will be spiritual growth as you come to the end of the month. So I just see for you quite a lot of activity in the month of January. And I feel that um, that it has to do with other people. It's more an outward energy that you're experiencing here. It's more, uh, it's very much related to relationships. You have an older woman, you have somebody new coming in your life, you have a younger man, um, and it's related in, in that particular way. Now, I do feel drawn to actually just put, put these cards aside here and just draw one other card um, here, just in terms of, just for a clarification for those of you who 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 the older woman and the younger man don't resonate with you. So I'm just going to give these cards another shuffle. And you have wreath here, so it says sorrow over loss. So it could be that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if all of these cards really resonate with you, but uh, it could be for some of you that you are actually experiencing a loss. And perhaps you've, you know, this this is really about a, a kind of, um, um, this is really about a kind of, uh, you know, a, 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 sorry, a heritage that you may be uh, receiving. Or it could be that you've been assisting somebody whose health is failing and you've gained quite a lot of um, wealth in the process, you know, and this person looks up to you. Um, I, I just feel like I still don't want to leave you with these cards. I want to, I feel like I'm not really getting what I wanted from these tea leaf cards. And perhaps, um, 
it was not the best idea to use it for a January as a as a as an oracle card guidance but uh, for some of you it, it's I'm sure it will resonate just wanting something more from these cards so I'm just going to there's also something called there's another card called bouquet here that's I'm asking for as a, a clarification and it says compliments from an admirer so look there's lots of elements for you for january there's a lot of people in your life for sure there's this older woman the younger man there's a new person there's compliments from an admirer perhaps this is the same person here there's there's sorrow over loss you know perhaps you've lost somebody perhaps it's been a death in your family or uh in the near nearby you perhaps somebody who's ta has taken note as to the way you've responded to some difficulties that you've encountered in your life and they are in awe of the way you've behaved and whatever it is there will be something to learn from and to gain from the situation and triumph over all your obstacles and and troubles so i think that ultimately it's going to be quite a good month for you um but it seems to be quite a busy month for you and i wish you all the very best for january 2024 good luck with that and a very happy new year to you all for those of you who've chosen the tea leaf card i just got a message for you as i was packing away these cards and i just want to tell you that just be open to receiving um, be open to receiving somebody new in your life. Be open. Don't be afraid to meet somebody new uh, in this month of January. It could actually mean quite a lot to you. And I think that, you know, be open to receiving messages as well from those who've passed on or those who may be in the, um, in the afterlife. And uh, yes, I wish you all a fabulous uh, January. And for those of you who've chosen the fifth option here, we're using the Enchanted Oracle. And we're asking, what do we need to know about January? What do we need to prepare for, for January? And what is it that we need to know? Okay, so it looks to me like January is going to be a month where there's quite a lot of um, introspection and work on yourself. It looks like you're going through a particular transformation in you and you need to remove yourself from certain things. It might be that you've been feeling quite pressed down in some way, maybe even oppressed in some way, but just being blocked and you're not able to really move ahead in some way or the other. It might be that you've had certain questions in your mind for quite a long time and that you have not been able to have resolved. And the cards, as you enter January, the first week of January, the card here, Dark Enchantment, um, it's almost as if it's telling me that you need to look at what is it that's holding you down. It's something invisible. It's something that you don't even know necessarily that it's holding you down but you feel it you feel it every day it's like a darkness or a kind of weight around you that's holding you down now this might be uh, having the presence of somebody else around you it could be your simply your relationship to somebody around you that can be altered or tailored in a particular way that will allow you to uh, experience their goodness more than what you know their whatever is causing this heaviness in your life I feel like as you uh, enter the second week of January, you're going to be able to spend quite a lot of time in your uh, your spiritual space, in your your moon space, where you're able to access energy from the moon. So there is going to be a new moon as we enter the second week of January and um, not enter, but sometime in the second week of January. And I think that that is actually... Uh, the time in which you're going to be going deeper into your own spiritual world and where you may be able to access certain aspects of yourself which you might not have been able to access in the last years. So for some of you, you could have been a little bit blocked or your your healing work or your your psychic work or your 
your spiritual work or simply your connection to yourself could have been a little bit blocked in in the last couple of years or in the last year or so. And it it's telling me that you're able to go deeper in that. You're able to spend more time in meditation and uh, in ritual and in playing with um, certain things as in like related to divination. So you're able to spend more time doing ritual things, um, things that perhaps have given you jo- joy in the past, but that you've um, ignored or left uh, by the wayside along the way because you've been stressed or you've been busy or you just haven't had time for it. So perhaps, you know, spending more time, um, you know, with candles, in, in, with the incense, reading cards, uh, reading meditations, doing meditations, um, doing particular rituals, cleansing rituals, clearing rituals, doing crystal grids, uh, doing you know, things like this, it could actually be to your benefit to, to do that. And I feel that as you do that, as you, you spend, you use the energy of the night to actually enlighten you, you're going to be able to find freedom through that. And I feel that you're able to find a part of yourself, you're able to access a part of yourself that might have been a little bit lost or that you might never have uncovered from yourself. So it feels to me like January is very much a time of being able to let go of the bonds that you have around you, which don't feel to me like somebody else is doing to you, but very much like bonds that you've tied yourself up in. And to actually just step out of it, like that Eight of Swords card where the swords are all around you, but you actually can stand up and move away. Um, and in the tarot, that is... And just to be able to move away from whatever it is that is holding you back that doesn't need to, that doesn't serve you anymore. And I think the energy that you'll be able to use in the week of the the second week of January, uh, which is this new moon energy, is actually helping you do that. And I think, and I would suggest that you spend more time with your ritual items, with your, um, your spiritual items at your altar and just be able to make the space to do that and not let anything get in the way of that in the second week of January. And as you enter the third week of January, it looks to me like there's quite a lot of lightness around you and you may even be able to be resonating with colors that you wouldn't normally use. It might be something that you, you understand a certain energy of yourself, a certain sweetness of yourself, a certain elegance that you may have that you haven't necessarily tapped into before and that brings you a great amount of joy. You know, perhaps it's been locked away for a very long time. Perhaps you've shrouded yourself from who you truly are. And it's almost like you, this new moon is allowing you to work with the spirit energy with the, and that's why it's asking you to engage with your ritual items uh, more than you normally would, and to and to, just to be able to birth a new aspect of yourself, and I think that as you enter the third week of January, you're going to be quite pleased with yourself and who you are, and I think that people around you are going to be able to see that change in you as well, and as you come into the fourth week of January, as you come into the um, the full moon energy once again, the card here is the maiden moon, but it's actually it's, it's the card of the new moon actually, but it's. I feel that, yeah, these two are swapped, but it feels to me like you are able to establish yourself deeper in your spiritual world and in your divination. And perhaps it has to do with prayer, has to do with healing. It has to do with really discovering your core. And I feel that uh, if you may have entered the new year on a bit of a sour note or a down note, by the time you end January, you're going to be on quite a high note because you know yourself so much more. And I feel that as you enter this year, you already have a knowing of who you are and you're just going to be progressing along that. It actually feels really beautiful these cards and it your progress and your work and your your spiritual evolution in the month of January feels really beautiful as well it really feels like a freeing of yourself and a, an empower, empowerment of yourself not but not just as a woman and as, as a, a sensual being but as somebody who has a, a good balance of that in terms of your your spiritual aspect so you know accessing really truly the high priestess in yourself and a, Whereas the high priestess has a lot of work to do with the with the outside, with the external realm, I think that uh, your work here is just the beginning for you within yourself, and just really tapping into what is your own psychic energy and what is your own ability to harness your own self. How is how is it that you use your intuition? Where is it that you need to listen to yourself more? 
yeah, just a bit deeper or more clearly and how do you go about doing that and I think those are the kind of questions you're going to be dealing with in January as you end the year uh, I mean as you end the month sorry uh, yes so I wish you all a very beautiful January may this evolution and this development that you're experiencing really fulfill you and bring you closer to who you are and I wish you a beautiful and fabulous um, 2024 as well. Many blessings to you all and blessings abound from Kismet Rising. <laughs>